Welcome to the underground, the Steel City Underground, the black and gold standard for Pittsburgh Steelers coverage. Now, here's your host, Terry Fletcher. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Steel City Underground WTF podcast. That is WTF What the Football podcast with Terry Fletcher. It's great to have you guys with me today. And boy, did week 11 bring us some kind of crazy things that happened. But first, I want to get some things in that definitely are WTF moments, but actually not on the field. So one thing that happened last week, I'm just bringing it forward, and this is kind of sad. I feel bad. I realize that everybody, you know, goes out and parties after they get a win, or at least they celebrate. I guess I should say celebrate. But when your offensive coordinator gets a DUI um, after that, that's not a good idea. But I was listening to Brady Quinn on the uh, NFL Network radio show on Sirius XM. And he was saying that when he was in the league and the four different teams he was with, that they are not allowed to serve alcohol on the plane. But if you bring your own, so BYOB, then they will give you mixers for it. And uh, many guys have gotten off the, the planes and then driven home. So I think the NFL is an easy fix needs to say, hey, no alcohol on buses or on drives home uh, or on flights home. Otherwise, that could happen again. He'll get fined. He'll he'll definitely get sanctioned. But that's definitely a what the football moment. Also, here's one. So it was snowing in Buffalo to I think they said they had three feet drop in like a 24 hour period. So they had to move the Buffalo Cleveland game to Detroit. Now, that's fine if you want to move it somewhere. But here's the funny thing. Detroit has one of the worst fields out there. Highest episodes of ACL tears because their turf field is terrible. It sucks. So to go from a snowy field, thank you, Dr. David Chow, for saying snowy fields don't cause as many injuries. I heard that as well. Um, To basically going to a Detroit field had to probably do something with I would say Thanksgiving, since Detroit then didn't have to fly anywhere and they basically get to uh, stay home. But now Buffalo's going back in just two days. So did they go home to shovel and then to come back? I don't know. What the football people? That was very strange to me to see that. Then I'm going to just kind of skedaddle over to the Patriots uh, game over the Jets. Now the Patriots won 10 to 3, but did you see that game? That was a 3 3 game all the way to the last five seconds. What happened? Well, Marcus Jones, the rookie, on a kickoff, he basically saved the day for the Patriots with a game-winning 84-yard, I should say, punt return in the final seconds. But here's the problem. There was a block in the back that nobody called. And later on, the New York office of officiating said, oh, no, it was to the side. Yeah, go back and watch. It was in the back. I mean, he actually blocked the guy in the back, and the guy fell. And here's the bad thing. I don't know if Zach Wilson's going to keep his job because even though the Jets, again, 3-3 the entire game, and, of course, we didn't watch the game. We we saw it on um, the uh, Red Zone channel, so we did get in and out of that game. But from what we saw, Zach Wilson, he didn't throw any interceptions, but he only completed 40% of his passes for 77 yards. That's it. And... I mean, okay. I mean, that's worse than anybody has ever done ever. But here's the what the football moment in that in that game when the um, when the rookie from the other team from the Patriots ran it in for the touchdown. When you have five seconds left, why don't you just tell your punt return or your punt guy to just kick it out of bounds? That way you're going into overtime. So the loss is, for me, as much on the coaching staff as it is on the punt coverage team. That was just terrible. Tell your punter, Braden Man, to kick it out of bounds, and now you go into overtime. So that was that was pretty sad. Chiefs over Chargers. Well, we knew the Chiefs were going to win, but that was a back-and-forth game. That was a crazy Sunday night game. They played okay. I mean, Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey. I mean, let's face it. We got a hat trick from Travis Kelsey. He's my fantasy um, tight end in a couple of my leagues. And Mahomes is my quarterback in three of my five leagues. But they were trailing quite a bit of the game. And they needed a touchdown win uh, to basically make that a, a win for them. And so we, they're one of their running backs because they had a couple out. Isaiah Pachenko, he had 107 rushing yards. But they currently don't have the best record in the NFL, So, but they do feel pretty good as a good team, especially with how the, the Bills are playing. 
Chargers, um, they, I don't know, you know, everybody loves to just anoint Justin Herbert, um, you know, the best quarterback out there, especially when he was a rookie, but he tends to lose when they're ahead. So it's going to be interesting, a division game to see what happens along the, you know, down the line. But I don't know, that was a very strange game to, to watch and to, and back and forth. So if you were a Chiefs fan, you were screaming the entire game. So we knew the Vikings had to lose at some point, right? Yeah, well, the Cowboys beat them down 40-3. to That was totally what the football. And they haven't done that. That's, a, you know, the third largest loss ever by a team that entered a game with a record of 8-1 and one or better. So that was brutal, painful, but at least we don't have to see Kirk Cousins take any more clothes off on those bets. Thank God for stopping that. But you know what? 8-2, I wouldn't mind having that uh, record right now. Now, Cordell Patterson, I don't know if any of you have him in fantasy, but he had a 103-yard kickoff return. My phone was blowing up, and I had a lot of people that said, oh, shoot, I sat him. Yeah, sucks for you. But here's the thing in the Steelers game. So, unfortunately, we did lose, and that was disappointing since it was a back and forth, and we did have an opportunity, I think, to to actually win that game. But here is a funny what-the-football moment. I don't know if you remember it or caught it, and that is... Somebody calling for a fair catch after the ball bounces. Yeah, you can't do that. You actually have to catch it in the air. So the reason for that is because you're looking up at the ball while you call fair catch, and you don't want somebody pummeling you um, if you feel them. And you can feel people's presence coming right at you where, you know, you're going to drop the ball. And that's why, you know, kickoff and punt returns are so dangerous because you never know what's going to happen because you you can't keep your eye just on the defender in front of you. You're keeping your eye on the ball. So once it bounces, you can look down and see where everybody is, and then you call the fair catch? No, not so much. So that was a definite what the football moment because the Steelers defenders, special teams, they stopped going after the guy, and then all of a sudden they were like, wait, 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 the ball bounced. So, yeah, that was kind of kind of funny. Justin Fields has passed for a touchdown and rushed for a touchdown in the uh, in the Eagles games in five straight games. And so he definitely um, is well, what the football quarterback. He's doing a great job out there. And I think the, the Philadelphia just had a hiccup and it looks like they're, they're really headed towards not just the playoffs, but I would think that they are going to give, I think them and the Cowboys and obviously I think Tampa Bay is going to actually come up in the back end. I do. I, I just don't see too many other NFC teams really coming out and doing much there. Now, the Raiders, <laughs> the Raiders and Broncos talk about an underwhelming game. Oh, my gosh. And I don't know what they're going to do in Denver with not only Russell Wilson, but with the coach out there. I mean, the Raiders, this is marked the third time this season that um, the Broncos have lost in overtime. That's tied for the most in the NFL history in a single season. And they just, they're just terrible. So I'm not really sure what they're going to do. And they lost to a terrible team, which are the Raiders. So that, that game was just a head scratcher from the beginning. Then we get into Monday night football. And so it was the Cardinals and the 49ers. Am I going to say it again? I am. Boy, you know, when you look at Jimmy Garoppolo, Garoppolo he's just so darn cute. So yeah, it's like yeah, last night he actually played pretty well. I mean, four touchdowns. Oh my gosh, who would have known? But the Cardinals, they were back with Colt McCoy. They did not have um, their starting quarterback. So Murray didn't play. And actually, funny story, um, and I, my daughter's brutal. She, in one of my fantasy leagues that she belongs to, she was playing against a guy who had Kyler Murray. Well, he didn't change him. He kept saying questionable, questionable. And if somebody's questionable and was out the week before and they play on Monday night football, your options, and it's a quarterback, your options to switch out your quarterback quick it, are going to be very, they're very low. The only quarterbacks he could have switched out would have been Jimmy Garoppolo. And nobody actually picks him up because he doesn't, he's not a big uh, points guy. Um, or the other one, was Colt McCoy. So I'm sure he was looking at that and looking at that. Well, Summer, my daughter, decided, so she was playing him, to pick them up and drop two of her running backs in the morning. Oh my gosh, talk about stone cold. And so she beat him because he had no quarterback to switch out. So I'm telling you, got to pay attention to those things. But that was a what the football funny moment for me, at least in the fantasy world. 
but it looks like that the 49ers won and it, it's hard to tell if they're a good team. They just have a lot of offensive weapons. They've got Christian McCaffrey, which, oh my gosh, what a godsend to them. They've got Debo Samuel. Yeah, he lost me too uh, in my fantasy leagues, but he, they've got, you know, their, their tight end Kittle. They just have so many weapons that what are you going to do? I mean, they have Mitchell who's back for their running back. So if, if you're looking at, and I guess I should throw them in the mix for the NFC team too. I guess the NFC is, is going to have some definite uh, bunching at the top. Uh, it's, it's the AFC, and that's kind of a, a crapshoot right now. But it, the 49ers won. Cardinal, Cardinals, I don't know if they can actually win with the backup. They're, you know, they... They got they got sloshed thirty one seventeen. Um, McCoy is three and one as a as a, star, a starter, um, but he just doesn't have anything around him, and that makes mistakes. And so it really is tough play for them. Now, one thing I don't know about you guys, I'm going to pivot back to the Steelers and and their what the football kind of week. I'm tired of people saying that you know the defense is letting us down. The defense is on the field almost 80% more than the offense. You can't keep having, and I'm going to say it, I think Canada needs to be out of there. We've got how many games left? Uh, six, seven, and he has to be out of there. We we absolutely can't keep having the same, you know, um, predictable offense that we have. Kenny Pickett did some good things against the Bengals, but and his play is definitely encouraging for the future. But at three and seven, and obviously, you know, Tomlin's probably not going to have a even a, a 500 record this year. It's his first time in 15 years. You've got to have somebody that gives Kenny something to to do. I mean, we've got a, an offensive coordinator that isn't on the field. He sits up in the warm booth. He's basically out there. And to me, this is a total what the football. He's sending in plays that everybody knows what's coming. He's either doing those pitch backwards or the end arounds or on the on the first downs. He's he's not doing play action. He's basically either um, th- throwing the ball for a couple of yards or he's basically running it. And we get what two yards, and all of a sudden we're in a three down whole. So if we can't change that position and stop pulling people up from within, let's get somebody who has some good experience, somebody who, you know, either has been or has potential to be an NFL head coach in the future and really try to give, you know, Kenny some options because he's just not going to last out there if we can't get him uh, something to do. And he's a mobile quarterback, play to his strengths. So this drives me crazy. But, you know, those are my kind of what the football when it comes to the Steelers, because it's almost like uh, people get upset about soap opera actors when they don't do what you want them to do. Well, they're only as good as the script. Well, Kenny's doing the same thing. I mean, he may change the script here and there and audible on occasion when he sees something on the field. But for the most part, he's doing what he's told. He's reading what's on his little playlist on his wrist and sending them in. And you can see even sometimes he's frustrated with a look on his face because he's just thinking, what the heck? You know, so, I mean, I realize the Jaguars are building for next year. I don't know what the Rams are doing. Matt, Matt Stafford got hurt again. Cooper Cup's gone. I mean, they're, they're talk about a, a hangover from the Super Bowl. They're even ranked 29 out of 32 teams. Even the Steelers are ranked higher. But the Steelers right now, and I get there's a lot of rebuilding there, but we have a lot of veteran players that are probably frustrated. So let, let's try to let's try to bring that back and give them something to do. I'd at least like to be in the top 20 of the rankings. Shoot. And so let's look at Packers. Let's, I mean, you know what, Packers, I would just stick a fork in them at this point. I mean, they're just, I think they look worse than even at four and seven. I think they look worse than the Steelers do. Mainly because you keep getting the scruffy looking, I just rolled out of bed, you know, uh, quarterback that they have. And I'm tired of hearing about how perfect Aaron Rodgers is. He's not. And he needs to not say relax right now. He's, I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> the Lions, they won straight three straight games. And they're actually getting into some playoff conversation at four and six. So good for them. I mean, Dan Campbell's doing a nice job. You know, I mean, maybe it was good for them to be on the HBO series. So, you know, hard knocks, who knows? I think, it, I think it's interesting there. Um, I was, I think people talking about Andy Dalton and the Saints, who Steelers beat, by the way, they're, you know, he's keeping the, the playoff hopes slimly alive, but come on, beating the Rams doesn't mean that they're, they're going to go into the playoffs. Let's, let's, let's be realistic there. 
who I'm excited to see what they do moving forward is actually the Falcons. You know, I, I really like, again, I always mention when I look at their quarterback and I just think it, it's really nice to see him being able to get an opportunity there. They beat the Bears. But when you when you look at that team at five and six, I don't know. The Chargers, they're playing for a wild card spot now. I mean, with the loss to the Chiefs on Sunday night, they've had so many injuries, but they don't play to win. They play trick plays. Their coach tries to do things that I don't know why people do things that way. But then you look at the Jets who are six and four, and that's a great record, but not with that quarterback. So I could see him heading to the bench and then who's your backup. So that's going to be definitely something to look at. Uh, the Seahawks, you know, they were on a bye this past week and now they're, you know, they come off their bye with a home game against the Raiders. I think they're going to really push for that playoff spot there. I could see that definitely. And so, and then the Ravens, I don't, I don't actually like to comment on the Ravens because I don't like them. <laughs> they still struggle on offense, which I know is a concern for some people, but you know, everyone says that Lamar is going to take them into the playoffs and because of their record at seven and three, they're definitely going to make postseason. I have no doubt about that, but how far they go, it's going to be a what the football. We're going to have to figure out what's going on there. So everyone, let's see what happens. Those top tier teams that we've right now, it's, you know, Chiefs, Eagles, Dolphins, Yes, Dolphins are there. Uh, Bills, Titans, Cowboys, Vikings, Ravings, Fortniters, and then Bengals. I mean, those are the your kind of your top ten with records anywhere from uh, nine to one to eight and two, seven and three, and six and four. So we'll see what happens. But until next week, everyone have a happy Thanksgiving, and thank you for listening to the What the Football podcast for Steel City Underground. We would like to thank you for listening and remind our listeners to follow us on social media and our website, www.steelcityunderground.com. 